But like I said, our heart is always supposed to go after the lost. There are people that are seated here. Some of you are going through all kinds of situations. Sometimes you come here, you are a shadow of yourself. And that's why I say, let love be among us. At least, you look at somebody's face, it's moody. You ask, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm fine. But you know, you are not fine. The loss does not really necessarily have to be sinners. Sometimes it may be people among us. There are moments at the time I wake up, I'm just crying. I don't know why. I'm just tired. I'm just worried, you know. And somebody just called. I'm how are you doing? I'm, saying, I'm fine. Say, so I'm not fine. Your voice. You don't just understand what's going on. Say, sorry, I'm praying for you. That I'm praying for you is big. Yes. It's a parable of love. How that at the midst of all kinds of problems and challenge, you should be able to go out for the lost. And sometimes it's not what one man can do. No. It's what everybody has to engage. Make it as a responsibility. That your friend, that person that you have cast away thinking, yeah, they are just, they are just, they, they are just that. Can you reach out to them? You don't know why. Because God still loves them. The parable of the lost is a clear-cut indication letting us to understand that there is always joy in heaven over redeeming of the lost. And this is the purpose for which Jesus Christ died, why he resurrected, and why he gave us victory. See, Peter, Peter, the devil desired to sweep you like a reed, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. But when you are strong, strengthen your brethren. That means the devil wanted you to get lost. But I pray for you that you don't get lost. And now when you are not lost, ensure your brethren are not lost. I sat down one day I was pondering. Are we sure Judas was lost because nobody prayed for him? If Judas had somebody that truly prayed and intercede for him, we can't blame Jesus. We have Jesus prayed for all of them. But why did Jesus pray for, for Peter specifically? You see why I said that sometimes we must be really, really intentional about reaching out to people, about helping people, about being there for people. As hard as this thing can be, it's not what one man can do. We all must make it our duty, our responsibility because people can truly be lost. The last part of the parable of the lost before we go to the last parable of the day is the parable of the lost son which of course many of you are aware of I think it seems to be a Lenten reading right 15 chapter 15 right Luke 15 11 and he said a certain man had two sons mind you you knew why Jesus has been speaking all this parable to back up his statement right the Pharisees we are angry with him why he relate with sinners and part of venture, you are here and you feel there are some of you that evangelism, the evangelism team here have been trying, reaching out to the lost. But some of you believe it's not your job. I understand. But let me tell you, you are not a true Christian if you don't want others to know about Jesus. Christianity is not the shouting, the glee, 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 glee we do. No. It's a lifestyle. It's a culture. And we must be intentional and deliberate about it. The parable of the lost son and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of the goods that fallen to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substances with riot living and when he had spent all there was a mighty farmer in the land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field to feed swine and he would then have filled his belly with the hawks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many higher servants of my fathers had bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise 
and go to my father I will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I'm not more worthy to be called thy son make me one of thy higher servant hmm. this is a popular parable very popular all of us knew about the parable we call it the prodigal son is that true but do you know this parable is really not more about the prodigal son more than the loving father i know you are looking at the son i'm looking at the father because the father is true the abba children are known to misbehave sons are meant they are known to misbehave fatherhood comes with so much maturity and so when you see a father behaving like a child you know there is an error there this parable to me is more like a rebuke to the pharisees because jesus christ put himself in a position where the pharisees were not qualified to be that if they were truly the fathers of the faith movement as of that time they should be wise enough to know that this son that are coming back have realized his mistake and is returning back home because i told you the genesis of this parable was because they saw people saw sinners coming to jesus right and the pharisees were angry why allow these people come to you and jesus was using parable to let them understand yes i have come for the lost they will not get to understand that but they began to let them understand stories with hidden meanings and i bet you they didn't understand because if they do understand they would have repented that there was a man that has two sons because it was actually them <laughs> they were the they were the foolish they were the wise they were the other they were the older son right are you understanding what Jesus is? <laughs> they were the older son because they were mature. Is that okay? And the sinners coming to Jesus were the younger sons. 